Hi everyone, my name is Dash and today I have Lizette Vaynermar with me, a customer success manager here at Embrace. She's going to cover the topic of how to create a safe environment for top performers to flourish and she's kindly created worksheets which you can download below. Without further ado, over to you Lizette. Thank you Dash, great introduction and let's dive into this topic of creating that safe environment. So we've broken down um, this big topic into eight smaller sections. Uh, we'll start off with some information about psychological safety. We'll look into a real world example, so it's not as abstract. We'll uh, look into the business impact with an exercise for you. Um, the, to, we will understand the feedback conditions. So when is the right time to give feedback? Uh, we will look into giving constructive feedback to make sure it lands well. Leading by example, how Embrace can perhaps help you too and some key takeaways that I hope you will uh, remember after this webinar. So what does safety actually mean? So in different situations, safety can mean something different. At home, at work, at school, and even at the sports field, it has a different meaning. If we look at quite a general definition, it means that team members feel safe to take risks and to be vulnerable in front of each other. So that could be during a meeting, but also just at your desk. Uh, or anywhere with anyone in the, in the company. Now, as mentioned, I think a real-world example really can help to um, have some sort of an analogy to make this transfer to you, but also to your team. So, Darsh, let me use you as uh, my <laughs> guinea pig. If I give you these stats, between 1903 and two 2015, this team had a winning percentage of 77%. So that's 112 years of winning almost all the time. Mm, tough one. What team could that be? I definitely know it's not the Australian cricket team. <laughs> can confirm. I can confirm it's not the Dutch soccer team either. Um, so let's look into who it is. Ah, should have guessed. They're from your home country. <laughs> They're the All Blacks, the New Zealand rugby team. So how do they do it? Because winning 77% of the time is a massive number. So uh, one of their team coaches, Chris Boyd, says that ideologically, we've made things very player-centric with our processes, which is at times holistic and long-term. Uh, now, for you, for your business, think people-centric instead of player-centric. Mm -hmm. So it starts with the selection of their players already. Uh, they are selected also for their soft skills and their physical ability. So it's two-folded. Um, they work as a team. So there's no I in team. I know it's quite a cliche, but it's <laughs> very true in this case. And they celebrate success together, but they also face defeat together. So they share feedback during the game, in the halftime break, but also right after the game. And they have a strong understanding of each function. So none of the functions would make sense if they were on their own, because you can't play rugby on your own. That and, just doesn't make sense. And just to come back to your point there earlier on the soft skills, is, is one of the meaning communication? Is it, what, is it leadership? What do you, are there any specific skills that you think are relevant outside of their physical ability because they're all obviously very large. Yes, they're very large <laughs> men indeed. Um, but I think specifically, like you mentioned, communication is very important. Mm -hmm. uh, and then not just uh, verbal communication, but also the body language. Mm. Because being able to trick your opponent into something mm -hmm. by signaling to your uh, co-player that actually does know what it means mm. is a very, um, well, good tool to have. Definitely. So let's look into a broader um, meaning of psychological safety because it allows for risk taking, speaking your mind, creativity and sticking your neck out without fear of having it cut off. So those are behaviors that lead to market breakthroughs. breakthroughs. If, if that's a hard word for a Dutch person to say, <laughs> breakthroughs. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, and that means that you dare to speak up in every type of setting at work. Um, without the fear of somebody laughing at you or dismissing your idea. Mm -hmm. So when business teams are actually missing out on feedback, uh, what does that mean? Uh, that means that 20% of uh, us avoid giving challenging feedback. Mm -hmm. So that can be feedback to a direct, direct co-worker that you see every day that has quite an impact on you, or it could even be to your team lead or the manager of your manager. And then 25% of us actually worry that the feedback won't land well. Will you hurt somebody's feelings? Will somebody be angry because of the feedback? Will it create more issues? So, so many thoughts that hold you back to actually give that feedback. And then over 50% uh, 
of people in the workplace don't receive any feedback at all. So nobody tells them you're doing a great job. Nobody tells them they're not doing an amazing job. And that behavior can spiral downwards because of that. And I guess um, one point to that is in the sports team, these, this is why it works. They have a safe environment, so they don't worry about the 25% not landing well, and they're not worried about giving that challenging feedback because the environment is so safe they feel comfortable doing those things. Exactly. And it's also a very common practice for them because mm-hmm. every game has feedback. Exactly. So why would you be afraid? You're yeah. still here after the last feedback you received. Not you particularly. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. So we've created an exercise for you to identify the business state for your particular team or business. So you can download this worksheet via the link below. And what you see on the worksheet are two boxes. Now I want you to see these boxes like post-its. And in each of them, you can write down one example of feedback. And then particularly the reason why you didn't give that feedback while looking backwards, you know you should have given that feedback. So perhaps it was during a last meeting or during a one-on-one with someone or somebody said something which you thought was inappropriate to someone else. But please write down the reason why you did not share the feedback. Now that you've done this, uh, I'll explain you why I want you to do this. Because there can be different reasons why you are blocked to give feedback. It can be yourself, so your personal beliefs and your actual skill set. So do you dare to give the feedback? Um, Do people actually listen to me? Mm -hmm. But it can also be more about we, so the group. Is it a mutual expectation that you're going to give Mm -hmm. feedback? Or will it perhaps create tensions in the teams or islands in the teams, separate groups? Or is it the context that you work in, the examples around you? Does the leadership team receive and give feedback to other people? Uh, What does your manager do? Is it the right time? Are there other people listening? Are you maybe way too busy to give feedback? Mm -hmm. Um, So it's also about the routines you've developed with your group of people that make your business. And so the post-its that they've just written on you, depending on what you wrote in there and depending on where they fit, is how you identify your state of business. Exactly. So looking at the two reasons you've written down in the previous exercise, identify for yourself Was it you and your personal beliefs? Was it the working relations you have in we? Or is it more the context of your overall business that held you back to give that feedback? And now what you'll find is that the more alike people are in a business, so when there's less diversity, you'll notice that more of these post-its will end up in context. Because if if certain behaviors are the norm, people will not Mm -hmm. see it as something weird Mm -hmm. because everybody does it. Mm -hmm. Where if you have different perspectives, like in our company, we have over 20 nationalities, uh, you always have to be quite considerate Mm -hmm. and quickly you'll look inwards into yourself uh, to see was this actually something I should have done. So how feedback can actually help you, the team and the business? So if there's a lack of clarity because feedback is not being shared, uh, that means that 70% of direct reports will say their manager doesn't provide clear goals and direction. I don't know if you've ever had a job where you didn't know the goal or the direction or the impact you were having, but I can assure you that's very demotivating because Mm -hmm. if you don't know where you're going, then where do you go? Um, It can also lead to a lack of productivity and actually uh, 74% of people don't feel they are reaching their fullest potential at work. Uh, People that don't reach their full potential are likely to get a bit bored, look around themselves because they want to be challenged, leading to the high turnover. Exactly, (laughs) the high turnover and that's 66% and they would say that they're likely to leave their job if they didn't feel appreciated. Mm so I'm, I'm glad I do feel appreciated and I hope so do you. Mm-hmm. I appreciate you. Thank you. Uh, but it's, these are shocking numbers. If mm-hmm. you apply them to your own business and think about the number of people you would lose if they actually felt this way. Mm-hmm. So what can you actually do to change this around? Uh, you can understand the conditions where feedback can be openly shared. What does that look like and feel like? You can provide constructive feedback and all the time lead by example. Of course, you're only human, but it also means that when you didn't do it right, that you share you didn't do it right, so others will get it the next time. So let let us help you a little bit with this, because how do you understand the conditions? A lot of research has shown that optimal feedback has a ratio of five to one, and then specifically five pieces of motivational feedback versus one piece of developmental feedback. Now, I like to see this as sort of an emotional piggy bank. So imagine this being your emotional piggy bank, Darsh, and I give you some um, praise 
on your great marketing skills and work and everything you've been doing for the team. And then something happens after a while that I don't appreciate as much. That will definitely, no matter how great our relation is, hurt a little because it's never nice to hear something you can do better no matter how well it's brought. Mm -hmm. um, but because your piggy bank is all already topped up and you've already had those five moments of praise, when I take a little bit from it by giving developmental feedback, you won't feel crushed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the, uh, when you say uh, human beings are just natured, naturally wired to feel hurt when something difficult comes their way, so it's important to be aware of your surroundings and notice that someone has already had too much bad feedback. So you, you maintain that ratio of five to one yes. to make sure people are growing in the right direction as opposed to just constantly being brought back down. Exactly. Okay. And um, please don't feel bad when you do give that developmental feedback or don't yeah. force yourself to get to exactly five. Because no. It can also be three and then one and then eight times where somebody yeah. does something great. But make sure you point out those great moments because then you can also give motivational feedback and developmental feedback. So constructive feedback, that's a term we hear all the time. So we found it much easier at Embrace to have sort of an acronym that everybody can stick to, a framework, let's put it like that. Now there are many different frameworks, but we've chosen to work with something that's easy to remember, and we call it COIN. It comes from my two cents worth, uh, or let me coin that, um, mm -hmm. whatever makes it stick to people's mind. And it gives you a framework to, first of all, provide context. Because when you provide context while providing feedback, somebody will feel more set up to react appropriately. Uh, if you just receive feedback out of the blue, it can be quite a shocker. Mm -hmm. Has it ever happened to you? Sometimes, yes. It's yeah. uncomfortable because you don't know how to react at the time. Exactly. And yeah. when somebody tells you, during this particular meeting, this has happened, you already at least know when and where. Yeah. Where otherwise, your first reaction is going to be, when did that happen? Mm -hmm. Then, of course, share your observations. What did you particularly see or hear or feel? Uh, and specific, specifically, feelings are very important when you speak about the impact that you talk about how it made you feel. Not everybody around you, because you cannot speak for others. Um, and what I particularly like about this framework is that it also includes next steps. So you can either have more of a conversation and be less directional and ask someone, what do you think you can do differently next time? Or when you've had the conversation a few times already and you're the manager of this person, you can say, I suggest next time you mm. do X instead of Y. Yeah. And that for me is the most important part because if you're intending for the feedback to change your behavior for next time, then you need to provide an option. Exactly. Otherwise, yeah. it feels so open-ended and there you stand with your feedback. And now what? What do I do? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. So let's have an exercise for you as well. So you can practice this yourself. Um, you can also print out the sheet and you can also do it with your team. So on the sheet you will find the coin framework and I want you to take one of these moments you wrote down on the other um, piece of paper already where you wrote down the reasons, reasons why you didn't give feedback. Now take one of these two examples and turn it into a coin framework um, piece of feedback. And I would really challenge you to also give it to the person that if it's still timely. So the last bit you can do yourself to make this environment where people feel safe and where they can flourish is leading by example. So that means that you can also ask proactively for feedback. And this can be after a one-on-one -on -one and just ask somebody, what else can I do differently? Or how do you feel about my performance? But you can also identify moments to exchange feedback. So when people come up to you and tell you, oh, this person in the team did this, mm -hmm. encourage them to give that feedback to that particular person mm -hmm. instead of wanting to solve it for them, which is a very natural thing you want to do as a leader or a manager. Mm -hmm. But people don't grow when you solve it for them. Yeah. And what about stuff like setting up a cadence? So feedback Fridays or, you know, we do Taco Tuesdays, but in terms <laughs> of feedback format, is it, is it good to have a cadence so people know to expect it's coming or to think about it for the week and get ready to share? Or is there something that helps? Well, especially when it's something new in your business, I would highly recommend having something like Cheerio for Perio or Feedback Friday, mm -hmm. or even include drinks with it. Mm -hmm. uh, but create this moment where people actually feel that it's an appropriate moment to give feedback. Mm -hmm. um, and then make sure that you encourage your team members to ask for regular feedback. So mm -hmm. often people just receive feedback right after a certain moment, after a presentation, but you can also encourage them to create a feedback form so people can actually leave their feedback. Yeah. So how Embrace can help your business? 
So what we can help you with is creating clarity and alignment to make sure that teams stay aligned and that you do achieve those uh, objectives and you make progress that you need to make to get there. We can help you identify growth opportunities. So the team is at a um, great speed and individuals keep on learning, but they also see where they can grow towards while learning. Mm -hmm. And then the last pillar of our business is value and recognition, making sure that people actually feel valued and recognized and that that becomes the culture of your company. Now that sounds easy, <laughs> but it's actually a lot of work to create yeah. this. So what we've created as the people enablement platform are those three pillars and all the things that go per pillar. So if your company is really struggling with goals management and you don't have any lightweight check-ins yet, uh, and you, your management team is really asking for some insights on what's happening in the business, then driving alignment would be the pillar that you go for first. Mm -hmm. Now, it can be so tempting to say, let's do it all. Mm -hmm. But like everything in life, you need focus to get somewhere. Mm -hmm. So we always recommend to pick one pillar. Mm -hmm. So if you would be keen to do leadership reviews and to develop a skill and competency library, accelerating growth would be your pillar. And as the last example, providing recognition, if company values are a thing you're developing, and insights and analytics, then that would be your pin. Correct. So three things that I hope you take away from this moment uh, after spending some time with us is that you understand what your people need, both the motivational side as the developmental side. Remember that piggy bank and make sure you top it up on time. Use the framework. It can be any frame framework. You can use um, behavior impact options. You can use COIN as we presented to you. But make sure the business knows there is a framework so people feel set up for success yes. when giving and receiving feedback. And lead by example. Show people the way. Thank you very much, Lizette, and we appreciate you uh, taking the time. If you made it all the, all the way to the end and you still haven't got all the information you need, Lizette's details are just below. Um, you're welcome to keep going through the website, but if you have any questions, please do contact us. Otherwise, thank you very much for listening, and good luck with the worksheets. Thank you. Bye.